Okay, 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 okay. Now let's talk about Caitlin Clark in Indiana Fever blowout win over Chicago Sky. But before we get started, I want to thank y'all for tuning in to the Gertie Mac Show, taking y'all time to subscribe to the channel, liking and sharing my videos. I really appreciate all that. Now let's go. So Indiana Fever pulled out the win like poor pork versus Chicago Sky in Chicago. There was an important game for both teams. Indiana Fever needed to win to keep their push for the playoffs to actually move up, you know, in the rankings because they've been they've been doing pretty good. Chicago Sky needed to win bad because they've been losing a lot and they needed to just keep their hopes alive to even have a chance to even get in there. Now, Caitlin Clark, she was cooking like a bocce. She was on fire. She was draining three-pointers, shooting them long range like a cell phone tower. Now, Indiana Fever, they got a blowout win. I mean, they blew them out like they were blowing out birthday candles. The score was 100 to 81. They beat Chicago Sky and Angel Reese by 19 points. People expected the game to be a little better than that. It was sold out. You had Shaq, you had everybody in attendance. For them to sit up there and get spanked like this, it was embarrassing. It really was. Kaitlyn Clark, Leah Boston, Kelsey Mitchell, Lexa Hub, they had their way on that court. And they actually played a good, great game. Melissa Smith also got a shout out to her. They've really been balling. Now, Kaitlyn Clark doing what Kaitlyn Clark does. She came away with 31 points, 12 assists, five three points made, and four rebounds. She got a double-double like the cheeseburger. Now, we got to talk about Chicago Sky because clearly there is some trouble over there with that team. And it's just big. It's bigger than just Kennedy Carter not playing. Because even when she was playing, I feel like the game would have been a little better, but they still would have lost. But they have problems going in the locker room. And I'm not talking about just just like some beef or something. But they don't have what it takes right now to go to the next level. Angel Reese alone is not going to be able to get this team where they need to be. Now, you can tell that Teresa Weatherspoon, the head coach for Chicago Sky, in this post-game interview, her response, you can tell she is upset. Like, she has had enough of this losing. But she also went off on the referees about their officiating. But uh, y'all check out this video of what she had to say about the Indiana Fever embarrassing them on their home court. Y'all check this out. Only combined for 16 points tonight. How do you get them more involved in a game like this? And where do you feel like maybe that was missing? Tonight? Well, we have to be a little more intentional. Just like our guards just told you here, we have to get the ball inside. That's who we are. The ball must go inside. It has to go inside to our, our, our bigs. They are dominant in there. It helps when they dominate the paint. Then it helps us on the outside. It gives us an opportunity to have perimeter game. Uh, they understand how important that is and, uh, and what it means to our success offensively. And just to follow up on that, do you feel like that was coming from Angel and Camilla not like getting to their spots? Was it from the guards not like looking for them? Just where do you think that lack of? And wait, I, I probably have to go back to the film and see, but there was a lack of rhythm and flow to try to move the ball and be able to get the ball inside to them from the right person. You, you might not be the person to make the pass, but who is? So let's get the ball to the right person to make the pass inside, and then we play off of that. That's who we are. That's what we do. And that's when we become a better team. At this point in the season, what is this team missing? What are we missing? What are you missing? Fifth straight loss, this one by 19 points after four by no more than four points. What is this team missing? We have a lot of things that we need to correct. And it starts on the defensive side of the ball. We are a defensive team, offensive runs. And if we're not getting stops, 
We're not being disruptive. We're allowing teams to get shots where they want it, how they want it, when they want it. Ball moves, swings from one side to the other, whether it gets to the second side, even the third side. It's very difficult to defend that. It's very difficult. So we have to be better on the defensive side of the ball. All five players. All five players. All right, you got to be disciplined when you're guarding the ball. You can't allow anybody to get behind you. You keep the ball in front of you. When you're closing out, which is probably the most difficult thing in the game of basketball, you got to be able to close out and be able to defend those people who put the ball on the floor. So that's defending off the bounce. And then those who can shoot it, you want to be able to make sure you're out there to contest and contain and then be able to do both. It's an approach. It's an approach. It is nothing more than an approach. And defense is a will and a want to. It's a desire. And defense is the hardest damn thing you're going to play in this game. The hardest thing you're going to play in this game is to defend. And you do so under control without fouling. In that third quarter, we sent them to the line over and over and over, over and over and over. We can talk about whatever the referee did, and, and that it's what it is what it is on that. I, and I'm, I'm like, Rachel, I don't need to get fined. I don't need to get fined. So I think that's enough, tells you enough of what I think about how it's wrapped. Coach Spoon, you guys opened up the game and you guys have really preached punching first. And that just wasn't there in the second half. I know film will probably show you something, but what kind yeah. of, what did you see where the energy was lost in that second half? I can't really tell you until I take a look at that film. But like you said, that energy we came out with in the beginning, that's exactly how we have to play. You have to punch, but you can't punch once. You got to keep punching. Like we always says 40 minutes to this game and you're going to have a team like that who have runs, but now we have to remain composed and poised enough to break the run. That's the game. The game is just like this, but once a team get on a run, how do you stop it? How do you stop it? You execute your offensive stuff. You get back, you get defensive stops. And then you heard your guards say that the veterans just need to step up here on this team with this being such a young team. What do you ask of your veterans? How, what is it that they can do to kind of show these rookies and these young players what to do to win basketball? Well, the, in times like these, this, this is the, the most important time to show the example of leadership. The most important time because of, you know, sometimes it get a little chaotic out there and the chaos is happening, but you got to gather your troops, gather your troops and the way things are refereed, you just have to make your adjustments as well. As well as I do as a coach, I have to make my adjustments as well. So, uh, That was the first time all season your team's allowed 100 points in a game. What makes the fever so tough to defend? Well, just like our player sat up here and said, if this doesn't sting, nothing stinks. Plain and simple. It's been, it seemed like there was a concerted effort to take more threes tonight. Was that something that you guys were planning on initially coming into the game, or was that something that kind of I, came I, I missed the beginning. I'm sorry. Oh, it seemed like you were the team was taking more threes. It seemed like that was a concerted effort tonight. Was that a game plan coming into this, or something that kind of was fell out through the game? Well, we're, we're a team who says if it's wide open, we want to take it. You know, and if it's not, we want to put pressure in the paint. You know, punching it in and then playing from there. But if you're wide open, we want you to get your feet set and knock it down. And just so happened, Lindsey really got it going. And some things can become very contagious. And then everybody else start knocking down threes. And that's that joy we play with, that fun we play with, the energy, the effort we played with. But that same energy and effort from the time that ball came in on the floor in the first half, first quarter has to be in second, third, and fourth. Uh, hi, Coach. Um, people have mentioned tonight the sort of lack of poise in the second half and lack of effort maybe on defense. How much of that is connected to Angel having to sit long stretches of the second half? Angel had four fouls. I got to protect that. You know, and whoever steps on the floor, we trust and believe that they can get the job done as well. Uh, so when Angel has four fouls, I'm not going to leave her out there and then I'll have her at all for the fourth quarter. So everybody else has to step up defensively as well. Everybody. It's not one person. It's everybody. It's everybody. You can include me on that. Coach, do you have a favorite comfort food that you eat after a loss? I don't. I'm, I love this game that much. Appreciate you guys. Teresa Weatherspoon is in a tough position. And they just don't have the players. Like she said, Angel Reese can't do it by herself. It's everybody. 
Everybody has to step up. And then you even heard her talk about how some of the other players talk about the veterans need to step up. So this right here is only going to lead to problems in the locker room. Because the veterans can be like, well, what you mean step up? But if you ask me, I don't really see like a lot of experience, even with the veterans. I understand they vets, but it's not showing on the court. I mean, Angel Reese appears to be like the leadership of the team. And I know Teresa saying that they need to go down low and that's how they play. But that is not just going to work game after game. You have Camilla Cordoza, she's on and off. I know she can be good, but she have days where she's not. Angel Reese, she get her double doubles and all that, but they're going to need more on the perimeter on the outside. They don't have nothing else to go with it. In down a fever, Caden Clark, at least Chris Assis has a little Boston. Then she has an Alyssa Smith. And then, uh, uh, but then you have Caden Clark out there on the perimeter. She can shoot. You have Lexa Hull. You have Kelsey Mitchell. So you have people who can knock down threes and make other people come out there and check them. But then Caden Clark can also blow past you like she going in the fast lane and she can drive to the basket. Chicago Sky, they're going to have to really buckle down. Don't even be thinking about the playoffs right now. Because they get there, they're going to get embarrassed. This was an embarrassing loss. This was Barbie night. This was Angel Reese Barbie night. The whole stadium was filled up with Barbie shirts. Only for Kevin Clark to come in there and rip them Barbie shirts up and put them in the trailer. That's it. It was an embarrassing night for Chicago Sky. And to lose like this on your home court, you don't want to lose like this. A close game, yeah, but not like this. Not like this. But y'all get in the comments tell what y'all think. Shout out to Chris's eyes. I mean, right now, they're winning. Even though I know people still feel a certain way about her. But don't y'all forget to subscribe to the channel, like and share this video. Also, hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I drop another video. And also, follow my social media, at GertieMac15. Holla.